Hi, my name is Mike Alexander. I'm the instructor of horn at the McPhail Center for Music. And today we're going to dig in a little deeper into the etude um, for horn for the Allstate audition. Um, there's a lot to dig into in this. There's a, uh, some really technical passages, some really beautiful lyric passages, um, and a lot of information in a short amount of time. So we're going to try and figure out whatever we can to make your experience putting this etude together as fun as possible. The first thing that I do when I look at any new piece of music is I try to figure out what all the text means. So if you look at this piece, there's a few big words there. We've got Andante Cantabile, Allegro Scherzando, and then Andante Cantabile again at the end. Um, so Andante Cantabile, let's take both those two words apart. Andante means it's kind of like a walking tempo, right? So it's kind of a generally medium tempo. When you look at cantabile, this is the more important of the two for music, like the musical aspect of this. That means singingly, right? If we're do looking at this, we should be very vocal with our approach. So think about it as a moderate tempo, very vocal. When we look at allegro scherzando, an allegro is a fast tempo. So if we're going through, we really want to make sure that we've got a good speed and the, the, the metronomic marking that they list here at 108, that's pretty darn fast. Um, scherzando is one of the more fun bits though, because scherzando is like a joke, right? So this should be kind of a fun thing for you to do. It, it, even though it starts minor, we still want to have that kind of fun feeling. Um, and then again, we return to Andante Cantabile at the end. So when we're going to start at the very beginning with this beautiful kind of melodic slurred passage, when you have this here in the beginning, We want to make sure that that is as beautifully connected and smooth as we can. It's got a huge slur over the top uh, of, of the first two measures, then a full measure slur, then another full measured slur, then two measured slur, then two measured slur. So everything is very connected. So when you do this, really think about how you blow your air through the notes. Every time you're in underneath a slur marking like this. Think about it as one exhalation the entire time. So you're not thinking note, 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 which would sound like. We've all heard playing like that, right? Instead, you want to blow through it like. The whole time, think. See how much smoother and less bumpy that is. Then we have this beautiful crescendo up in that second measure, and you can really use your air to blow through that measure to make that grow. When we're looking at that hairpin crescendo there, we've got the second measure goes up, the fourth measure goes down. That means that third measure needs to be sustained through that whole thing. So keep thinking about your air and your dynamics to really keep that beautiful and ringing until we have a beautiful diminuendo in that fourth measure. That gives you a real arc and a four measure phrase rather than a bunch of one measure ideas. Um, you can apply that into the next set of four measures too with a beautiful slurred sound, a beautiful crescendo up to that high G, um, and then keep that pretty resonant because there's no diminuendo at the end of that. Um, it is the end of a phrase, so you can kind of come away a little bit if you think it's appropriate, but make sure that we're not coming down to a really, really, really quiet dynamic there, but rather keeping it relatively full. With that high G, um, I know range can be an issue for a lot of us. As you're ascending into that upper register, think about activating your airstream, never backing away on your air. Keep everything here really forward. Think about a diamond shape between your the bottom of your nose to your corners to a pointed chin. And then really activate that airstream forward. You can help to raise your tongue forward. If you can whistle, think about that, what that motion does with our tongue inside our mouth to make the, the pitch go up and down. It's the same thing on the horn. So think about that do we, do we kind of motion with our, with our tongue. It's exactly the same as So think about that as a good practice tool. When we move into the Allegro Scherzando, this really moves very quickly. So it's important to start practicing this very slowly first to make sure that all of our notes are the right 
articulation and we have all our musical ideas in place before we start flailing with our fingers too much. Then I would just recommend slowly working up with a metronome so everything is really steady with your rhythm. Um, before we get too fast, you want to start with that perfection and work your way up. Right off the bat, we have a dynamic drop. This beautiful melodic stuff that you usually think of as relatively kind of quiet dynamic is actually very full mezzo forte. When we get to the Allegro Scherzando, we drop down to a mezzo piano. So even though we're moving fast, we got to keep with a nice good clip. We want to keep that dynamic pretty low. So when we're doing this opening, we don't want to have too much power. That being said, you always want to make sure you're using enough air to get a really resonant big sound, because otherwise you get something like... which is the last thing we want on the horn. So think about filling it up. Right, something a little... should be a nice kind of shape for that airstream there. Um, as we move on in the second line, we move back up to mezzo forte. So think about really bringing up that dynamic to show that you can read the text on the page, that you can demonstrate to the panel that this is a bigger dynamic. Especially when we look ahead to that third line of the Electro Scherzando, we drop back down to a mezzo piano. So really think about going from, yeah, say if we started in the third measure of Electro Scherzando. <laughs> something that kicks it out just a little bit more so that you can hear that there's a big dynamic change. Um, moving towards the back end of the Allegro Scherzando, we get this triplet passage. And this is by far the most challenging part of this etude because we move into a really cumbersome register and it's all slurred and we have kind of an awkward set of fingerings. Um, one thing that I would recommend is experimenting with your B flat horn if you're used to using a lot of the F horn, especially on the E flats. I use a lot of trigger one in this. So if I'm doing this very slowly for you. You can see that on the on the E flats, I'm using trigger one instead of the second one, uh, second valve, because otherwise when we have F sharp and E flat, I have a lot of Right, we have to move back and forth between that, which can slow us down a little bit. It's not necessary for you to do that, but if you're finding that you have trouble slurring smoothly, that's a good solution um, if you have trouble with moving without any fingering help. Um, one thing that can help with this, because we're moving away from very aggressive, kind of assertive air to something really smooth in this register, you can is in order to captivate that, or to grab onto that um, legato sound, if we want to heighten that, we can do something like flutter tonguing. So something like. The reason I like flutter tonguing is because in order to flutter tongue, your embouchure has to be set perfectly and your air has to move through. So basically, if you don't know what flutter tonguing is, you're just kind of rolling your R's at the front of your mouth while you're playing and buzzing. Um, it can take a little bit of getting used to. It's a good practice tool to use all the time. I, I would highly recommend that. Um, if you don't know how to do that, just go back to those ideas about the beginning. Keep making sure that our air is pushing through those slurs so that we can keep things really, really smooth. Um, otherwise, again, we get that really big bump. In this register, we're going in, it, we're in, we're in the kind of below middle C register to start, is think about dropping your jaw slightly forward. Think of a duh syllable down here. If I were to use the same syllable that I would use for the A before that, which is I think of as a duh, duh syllable, if I drop and use that same syllable in the low A without changing anything, it sounds like. So if you ever get that kind of shallow sound, it's probably because your oral cavity is a little small. So you can open that up, duh, really drop that jaw down and forward slightly just a little bit, you don't want to do too much, um, and then open up that oral cavity, that'll give you a much bigger sound down there. You can see that, how my jaw kind of moves in there. Now, if we're down there, it's hard to get back up, so you really have to think about do thinking about those oral cavity shifts as we move up. Think, watch my jaw as I move a little bit. You can see that there's some slight movement there as my bring things up a little bit. That's just one idea, but there's a lot of ways you can go through that. 
Um, one last thing I want to draw your attention to is in the last two measures of the Allegro Scherzando, there's a retard, really tiny, written up at the top. It's hard to see, so make sure that you've circled that retard so that when you get there, you can slow down into that fermata and use that fermata to your advantage. You've been playing for a while, hold it out for a while, take a breath, and then start with that Andante Cantabile ending at the end. The last thing I just want to bring out at the end is we only have one forte marking in the entire piece, which is for two measures in the final Andante Cantabile. So when we do that, really highlight your dynamic range by relaxing into a loud playing. We always want our loud playing to be relaxed and full, so think. <laughs> And then there, really bring it down to a dramatic mezzo piano. When we do that, we want that highlights the huge dynamic range that you have as a player between forte and that diminuendo to pianissimo. And then again, when you're dropping down into that low G, you don't actually need to do that much dynamic drop because it's going to be softer anyway. But really think about getting a resonant so sound down there and it should drop down automatically. Again, think down when you're below middle C about dropping that jaw and getting a da syllable. So we go from a D, da, da, right? So. So those are just a few hints that I would have as to how I would approach this piece. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can play this. There's a lot of different musical ideas you can infuse to bring out your own personality. Um, but that should get you started in how you kind of put this together. Have a great time. There's a lot of really fun stuff in here. Uh, this is about as much fun as we can have playing the horn. So have a great time and enjoy. <laughs>